Hello everyone, and welcome to this Blood Super Eclipse we will be having on January 21st, 2019. By the time you're watching this, we will have already entered into the energetic paradigm that this eclipse represents, and we will be building closer and closer next to the 21st and after the 21st for quite some time towards the end of the month, and even for some of us uh, through the end of the astrological new year, so through February and the beginning of March, with this energy and in this um, possibility for extreme healing, for ultimate rejuvenation, and for um, destruction and devastation if you wanted it to be as well. This is the type of moon that really gives you free will and free range. It's sort of a carte blanche energy, I feel, and I also feel it to be um, at the hands and at the mercy of many. I think that we are... Um, really powerful right now collectively. I think that societally and collectively there is just a lot of power and a lot of capability within many of our hands right now. And um, we are called to remember our graces, our virtues, and our um, vision for the future and what we truly want, how we want to be treated, and how we want to remember how we want to remember this time and how we want to remember ourselves moving forward. There is so much potential for creating a guideline, for creating a structure, and for creating a template for how you see yourself and for how you operate as a person. Um, such a shifting ending time as well, I feel. Um, this isn't so much a transition energy, this isn't so much a transformation, but it does represent an ending nonetheless. So there's an ending and it walks away. There's an ending and something goes, and we sort of embrace the transformation that we had been, we had been having for a long time throughout 2018. It doesn't feel to me that there is a sudden unexpected transformation with this, but it feels to me that most definitely things can end and um, the things which hold us back especially have a great uh, ending period here if we would like to see that. So what makes this eclipse so special? Um, it is not just a lunar eclipse, but it is also a supermoon and a blood moon. So what is a supermoon? A supermoon is when the moon comes to its closest angled approach to the Earth, called perigee, and this happens during only during a full or new moon, and it makes the moon look uh, extremely big because it's closest to Earth, so it, it's um, at its largest. Um, and that makes uh, the energy of the moon um, hit closer to home, so our emotional instincts, our changes, our shifts, in life and our sort of seasonal approaches to our experiences and circumstances are hitting closer to home right now. Um, any type of emotional experience, any type of um, sort of watery reaction to things hits closer to home. So this is a time where um, your emotions will be very uh, on high and also a time where you can see that things which have been held back for a long time or emotions which have been under the surface or have felt very small suddenly become much bigger and much closer to home. Likewise, you can feel much more empathetic. You can relate to other people much easier. You can have other people relate to you much easier. What an important, incredible time to speak your truth um, in a safe type of environment. What an important and special time to be truthful to yourself about what your emotions are because without that you can really um, have a very forced sense of awakening that can be very uncomfortable okay and this is also a blood moon what is a blood moon it's a bit more complex to describe, but basically it deals with the sun rays and certain atmospherical uh, and chemical compounds that cast a uh, basically optical illusion upon the moon that just makes it red and makes it a reddish tint. And um, I believe that there are also other factors that can contribute to this. And there's also a bit of um, unsureness or like um, we're not quite positive why exactly it happens, but we think that it's because of atmospheric conditions and we think that it's because of like sunlight filtering through those conditions but we're, we're not quite positive uh, completely about why this happens but um it just it looks quite occult and it looks quite uh, malevolent in the sky when you see that eclipse happening and it's like this red color it feels um like uh, um very damning and austere to see the the red moon looking back down at you and through history um eclipses of course have had um a lot of significance uh before you know humanity sort of understood why what they actually were you know what the process was especially solar eclipses but lunar eclipses as well um you know throughout millennia these blood moons super moons eclipses have had such an impact on uh, the people who saw them and came with such an occult sort of uh, mentality. And occult really isn't even the right word, but they were always um, sort of instinctually known to be an important factor in what was going on in the lives of humanity. And it would make sense, you know, these are our light sources, these are our 
um, you know, our energy sources, the, the sun, of course, but the moon is um, our light in the dark, and it, it relates so much to um, emotions, tides, and uh, the way that our planet functions. So when these things get blocked, even for such a small amount of time, it would only make sense that that would have an effect on the beings which they empower. Um, and to block out that energy source can oftentimes make people act in very strange ways, you know, um, it can be draining, it can um, make you uh, feel emotions that you've not felt before, because there is just a different chemical. And um, I want to say, uh, what what's the right word? Like, there's a different type of ultra violence as well as just light impact into our absorption and into the planetary atmospheric conditions and stuff and i mean just just think about it that would definitely have an impact on people and and you know uh full moons eclipses solar eclipses lunar eclipses you know it is well documented that uh, more crimes happen more murders happen um and people even when it's not on such like a statistical level you know everyone feels um stronger urges during full moons or report feeling more um you know volatile during odd solar and lunar activity. I don't think that it's a coincidence. And this one to me intuitively feels um, to be one of the higher level experiences of that. We had one last year as well, except it was a super blue blood moon, not just a super moon and blood moon eclipse. And this moon that we're having now this year, almost exactly one year later, is so connected to that one. And I'll link that one in the top right hand corner if you would like to have some reflection on those uh, spiritual and uh, intuitive messages that's in the top right hand corner in the description box below. But what I've understood about this uh, moon through my research and through my uh, intuition about it is that this is... Um, the ending conclusion of a sort of a quartet of eclipses which have um, gone throughout the last about um, two years, about a year and a half actually, um, and the quartet entails of the Grand American Solar Eclipse, which happened in summer 2017, um, the Super Blue Blood Moon, which happened in January 2018, the Plutonian Solar Eclipse, which happened in summer 2018, and now this uh, Blood Super Eclipse happening in January 2019, okay? Again, top right-hand corner, I have the Plutonian Solar Eclipse and the uh, Super Blue Blood Moon, and that's in the description box as well. I wasn't doing this on YouTube back during the... Um, Grand American Solar Eclipse in this format, um, so I don't have a video on that, but I'll let this also serve as a bit of enlightenment about what that introduced. And uh, what you're going to see is just that there was a solid few chapters in your life since that time of about mid-2017 um, that became quite bloody or quite frantic, quite frenzied, quite unexpected. A lot of things being taken and a lot of things being given. Um, this is very, very much responsible for the chaos and discord that we have felt at almost an exponential societal level over the last two years. You know, I don't think that it's just um, coincidence that everyone talks about how difficult 2017 was, how difficult 2018 was. You know, everybody has a difficult time every year in some way, but the amount of... Um, pain that people have voiced over this last year and the amount of transformation as well, the amount of healing as well that has happened and is still in the process of happening is something more exponential than we have seen in humanity in a long time. And a lot of things emerge as a result of this quartet of energies and as a result of these processes that we've gone through at a human level and the connections that we create uh, coming from it as well due to the really chaotic and sort of um, angry type of energy that this can potentially manifest itself as, not always. Um, again, when we're talking manifestation and we're talking channeling, it doesn't really matter what the transit is or um, whether it's you know what we consider traditionally to be very positive, very negative, very easy, very difficult. They can really come out in any way that you choose because they have to filter through consciousness. So um, yes, there is a potential for anger with this transit and a potential for frustration and um, succumbing to compulsions and urges and impulses that are not really yours or not really native to you, um, like just for the heck of it and just for like, um, you know, it's it's like a very uh, cathartic energy as well. And I feel that the key to moving through this time with um, an idea of, you know, healing and an idea of um, rising higher and, you know, not succumbing to something that creates a lot of trauma in your life is to really embrace patience and to really embrace um, lightness, 
lightheartedness, softness, easiness, um, and not stoking fires, I feel, is such an important thing for this transit. It is a, um, th th this is happening at zero degrees Leo, so right at the cusp of Cancer and Leo. So it has a lot to do with when we come out of the shell, when we um, feel emotionally no longer that we need a shell and we sort of grow you know, the claws and grow the teeth to defend ourselves versus just putting up a barrier towards defense. Um, so yes, this is like the period of time where people can come out of the woodwork with things, where people can decide no longer to be silent, can decide no longer to, um, you know, be the passive role. And, you know, I do feel also a period of time where people can become very violent as well and very, um, you know, offensive, very aggressive. It's a very aggressive, cathartic type of energy. Don't let it scare you. But it is, I think, an important time for those of us who are um, not ready or not feeling like um, a sort of, you know, cathartic, overstimulating, oversensitizing experience is right for us to hold back, to safeguard ourselves just a little bit and to um, ride it through. It does to me feel like a storm type of energy. I do feel that there will be like winter storms. I feel that there will be tornadic, you know, weather or something that um, tsunami, uh, earthquake, something along those lines. Um, because I just feel that it shakes. I feel that this energy is um, a very intensely vibrating energy. So uh, yes, for those of us who would like a bit of a peaceful experience and to understand our own shifts at a more internal level, not a great time to be indulging with people that we know we have drama with. Not a great time to be, again, stoking the fire or to be, um, you know, um, something, uh, uh, an analogy that I've been liking to use a lot lately is... Um, not walking blind into the viper's nest and and you know when you realize that someone or something in your life is a bit of a viper or a bit of um you know a, a mean-spirited type of and I, I don't mean that snakes or vipers are mean-spirited but i mean you can't just go up to a snake and like mess around with it and like and like and get up all in its face and get really frantic with things uh, without being bitten you know this is a time where you are bitten for getting all up in people's faces or, or stoking fires or like letting yourself succumb to your emotions. There's this kind of like tidal wave energy sort of uh, collectively right now where we succumb to our emotions despite what we're emoting to. So our emotions become more important and the voicing of them, it's not the emotions that are important, it's seeing ourselves in a vain way as the voicer of emotions, the voicer of truth, the protector of our own types of dignity. Um, and we don't really think about what we're emoting that to or what we're um, putting ourselves in that situation with. And a lot of us do go up to the proverbial vipers and get all up in their faces just to like, you know, be that role and to look that way and to like make it really clear who we are and stuff. And we get bitten for it and we die from poison. It's very easy to see that type of thing in this um, paradigm. So what I encourage everyone to do is to get true with your own emotions, um, get true with yourself, understand who you are for yourself and not really feel like you have to make that um, perilously known to other people and put yourself at risk to make that perilously known. There are paradigms where we can speak our truths easily. There are paradigms where we can be easily understood by others and where it is about letting other people know what your truth is. This isn't so much one of them and I just have to be quite direct about that um, because at the grander scale, and th this isn't just something that should be discouraging. This isn't something that should be like, oh my God, I can't speak my truth or oh my God, I can't be emotionally open. And that's like a really bad thing. Um, this is a period of time that focuses on more tangible things. Again, we're moving from Capricorn to Aquarius time. We're fixing our bank accounts. We're fixing our homes. We're fixing our bodies. We're fixing our like uh, physicality. And then we're transmuting that into emotions. I feel that by being hyper emotional right now, I feel that by succumbing to urges or succumbing to um, false instincts right now, I feel that it denies the need for tangible validation. I feel that it denies the body and the soul's need for a uh, real dimensional expression, which is a physical one here and now. Um, and to deny that is to decrease your health in such an exponential way right now. So again, this is a time to focus on real things, a time to focus on, um, you know, hitting the microphone like I just did. Um, you know, I'm talking with my hands here. I'm getting physical is good right now. Exercise, you know, in a kind of conservative way. Don't, because I could also see like overdoing that type of thing with this too. But Mars is in Aries right now and it's Creating a fire trine, it's another thing we have to remember about this. You know, Moon in Leo, Mars in Aries, Jupiter in Sagittarius. It's so hot. It's so 
again, stoking the fire, it's not good because um, we have all this earth energy and water energy as well. Um, so it's just, it's oversensitizing, it's overstimulating. And again, the, the important way to channel this is with like excitement, enthusiasm for the future, enthusiasm for your real experience and for what's actually going on with you. And not tricking yourself into thinking that getting up in other people's faces or, um, because that's what I keep seeing is like people getting in each other's faces, um, not tricking yourself into thinking that communicating to other people in a sort of like a uh, glamorous or dramatic way, the way things are, is like really doing much for you, okay? Let's talk a little bit about the positive aspects of this transit because they are much more numerous than we might see at face value. Um, there's something really, really important that comes in with this energy. There's something vital. There's something vital that you will see Okay, um, and that's the general concept of eclipses and what I always go to when I think of eclipse energy is, you know, um, something comes in, something goes out. There's a very um, visceral give and take, especially when they're a potent type of eclipse, you know, when you've got a lot of other aspects happening within the eclipse. Um, a very obvious, very clear give and take. So I feel that with the tangible nature of this time and this eclipse, we can get kind of choosy about what that is and we can have a little bit more conscious control about what that is if we truly get clear about what we're asking for and what that entails. Um, the, I've noticed that the universe does tend to take the reins if we're not really clear about what we're asking for. For example, we're like, oh, I just want to make all of this money and I just want to, um, you know, have this house and I just want to, um, you know, get back with my ex, give that to me now. Um, it's not that type of thing because moon in Leo is also like the baby moon energy. It's kind of... Um, you know, the moon is not debilitated in Leo. It's not really one of the worst placements for the moon. But I, I've known that uh, moon and Leo energy can tend to also be odd with its wants and desires and not really think them through. Like, um, yeah, you know, I think I want to get back with my ex because they have that really nice car or they, um, they, they knew how to um, treat me and they knew how to cook for me, but they cheated on me, but I kind of missed the cooking. I think I want them back. You know, things like that, like Moon and Leo, like these little things like that are nice, these little things can sometimes blind them to um, uh, the other face or the other side of things. Like Moon and Leo can be quite easily tricked. So don't get tricked with what you're wanting during this time. But with a lot of meditation, with a lot of prayer, with a lot of, um, you know, back of the mind conceptualizing about your needs and you and you at a more physical deep level you can really come to a lot of incredible understanding about what you need in life about what you're lacking you know we've been dealing a lot with insufficiency saturn and capricorn is an incredible incredible blessing in the sense that it shows you where things are lacking and we've had that for the entire last year and we're having it for all of this year as well um and we might sort of see our insufficiencies or we might sort of see what we don't have really clearly and feel um, not good about that, but how great to see it and know about it versus to not see it, but it still be there, okay? And that's what we have to remember during this time as well. How do we want to remedy our insufficiencies? That can be so clear during this time, the remedy that you need, what your body's asking for. Also, I feel that the physical world supports it so easily, like you've been in a destructive home environment. So easily you can move into a place that works right financially, that works right, um, you know, it's like the type of structure that you want. So easily can you leave uh, places and patterns of lack and habit. And this stretches out, I feel, until March, um, where hopefully we've constructed what we need by then and can start start to thrive more in it but i feel from now till march due to this due to it be the ending of the astrological new year so easy it can be to refill the gaps to um you know find a sort of divine solace in what we've lacked and to remedy that and to find something really fulfilling to uh, let it in so if we're getting past the desperation if we're getting past the um you know getting past the sort of fear spectrums that are compulsive, compulsive fear. You know, I'm being cheated on, I'm being taken advantage of, um, I'm in a career where everybody talks bad about me but I've never actually heard it. Any types of like unsure fear, any type of, um, you know, uh, oblivious types of fear. If we can, you know, on one hand get past it but also just see like, that's not encouraging towards my health. I can't help what other people do. I can't help the choices of other people. I can be a loving person. I can um, I can prioritize them as much as is good for me. But other than that, I can't control other people. So yes, we deal with control with this type of energy spectrum. So much, so much. Leo energy, Capricorn energy, Aquarius energy. 
strongly placed Mars. Um, so much dealing with control dynamics. What a great, great environment to get real with what you can control yourself, your body. Lots and lots of people are trying to find control where it doesn't exist. Lots and lots of people are not taking advantage of the control where it does healthily exist. So we think, oh, I want to control that person that I'm with, or oh, I want to um, control my bank account in this way. Um, yet at the same time, we don't control our emotions, or we don't control you know, our eating habits, or we don't control the things that we actually should and can. Um, that is such an important, vital thing to see through right now, and to just click it, to see that causes this sense of like homeostasis within your body that um, can heal so much and it's like it's done and it works and you come out of this time and you think, wow, that last year was hard because I couldn't see where the control should have been. And I just want you to sit with that for a second. And y'all know, y'all know that my videos, I don't sugarcoat things, I don't, um, I get, I'm very direct about things, but I'm also not pessimistic, and I try to not be at least. Um, I am actually an extremely optimistic person, and I feel that this is a type of optimism that we can embrace with Jupiter and Sagittarius and Saturn and Capricorn together. This sort of understanding of, you know, where we struggled before and fixing that. Um, having the confidence and courage that we can heal, that we can make up for insufficiencies, and that we can experience like a sudden, sudden shift through just understanding um, where the lack was, um, whether that be our own faults or the faults of others, not being so focused on that and sort of letting that slide away and just seeing how things are, you know, just seeing what it represents for us. And you can see yourself over the next year um, really, really flying high and really experiencing a different, different, different type of experience in general, um, where the same types of struggles, the same types of patternings are a thing of the past and can easily be replaced with things which are much more positive because again this is humanity this is um this is human life so things aren't can't really be perfect and that's not really my goal to make things perfect but certainly 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 we can have we can make things easier we can make things easier for ourselves and we can make our environments and our lives and our groups you know our families we can through our only our own projections create a much simpler simpler the simplicity generally is so so great right now and and i feel that this eclipse this super blood eclipse um gives the stage that you can utilize so tangibly and so fully to decide okay i don't need this anymore i don't need this addiction i don't need this cycle i don't need this abuse i don't need um you know these things these these um these things which cost me my security what i do need is you know this water i need this um i need to remember how i used to function at a high level i need to introduce the things into my life that um, unquestionably healthily supported that and making those decisions about what you what you give away and what you take back in what a great way to channel that energy um and what a great way i feel also to conclude this video it's so ultimately positive if you let it be as long as you're not succumbing to compulsions or succumbing to things which um, threaten who you've been before, the patterns that you've set before that are positive, and um, the things that you enjoy remembering about yourself. So don't be afraid to work with that and don't be afraid to really sit with this energy and think about it and um, meditate with it because it, it is something that can really teach us incredibly. Don't be scared of it. Not not a good time for fear, not a good time to worry about what, what um, could be if things don't get better. Um, we're good, I feel. Um, I so hope you guys enjoyed this channeling. Uh, my 2019 year ahead annual forecasts will be available over the next few days. I'm sure they'll be going up on YouTube. Um, so I hope you'll keep that subscribe button hit and that bell notification on so you see when they get posted. Um, I am also on Patreon. Uh, there's going to be a lot of new stuff over there, um, both free and for my subscriptions. So I hope you'll follow me or choose to do a subscription. My 2019 year ahead meta companion will be available there soon. So it's definitely one of the best times of the year to get over there and check that out. Um, I'm wishing you guys so much love and light. Uh, I'm on social media. Your likes, comments, and subscribes, as I was saying, make my day. Um, thank you so much for being here, everyone. And happy 2019. We've just got a little bit more to go before we're really uh, feeling very new with things, I feel. Good luck. Happy navigating. Bye.